By now you have probably heard or seen OSP dice. This is another super finesse technique brought to us from anglers from the country of Japan on their highly pressured bass waters. My friend Tony was using one just last week when we were smallmouth fishing and he caught the first four smallies real quickly and then it flipped off the line and right away he said, oh man, there goes $6.25. One of the downsides is that these are really expensive per plastic, averaging around that $6 mark for one little lure. Well, pros on the top circuits have been experimenting, right? They've been playing around with their current soft plastics. And my brother contacted me this week and he said, hey, have you tried this? And this is what he created right here. What he had seen done was taking a small little stick bait and threading some strands of skirt material through it. Well, I had to try this. So I went and took two different plastics. I took an Elastec stick bait and the one made out of Plastisol. And then I found a spinner bait that had that rubber skirt loop around it that had dry rotted. And I pulled off some strands of both chartreuse and some white. The next thing I did was picked up some craft needles. Now it's real important to make sure you have one that has a pretty large eye to it. Makes this entire process a lot easier. Then take one of your strands and I took the full strand and then cut them in half. Okay, I didn't want them hanging out of the soft plastic too terribly far, but you can definitely experiment with what works best for you. So I took this skirt strand that I had cut in half, threaded it through the needle and then placed it about a third of the way through. And the reason for this is when you push the needle through the soft plastic, then that loose end or that open end of the strand is gonna pop through and you can go ahead and center them up just the way you like. And believe it or not, this is not very time consuming to do. I made these pretty quickly. And as far as the piece of stick bait, I cut off the narrow ends and then each piece that I made was about the length of my thumbnail. But like with anything, when we're messing around, go ahead and try whatever you want. You could even do this on a full five inch stick bait if you like. As far as the rigging and the hook, I used a tiny little mosquito hook and then I tied up two wacky rigs with it and then also a drop shot. My brother had great success wacky rigging this and Tony used it on a drop shot rig. Now let's take a look at the action, and this is where it got really interesting. The first thing that I noticed is when I let this fall on the wacky rig, certain strands would just vibrate like crazy. What it really reminded me of is an insect in the water. The first time I saw one of these little dice, I'm like, is that supposed to imitate anything? Not that that's important. We know that, you know, bass are opportunistic, right? But when I saw this going through the water column, an insect just immediately, you know, pictured itself in my mind's eye. And these strands would just vibrate like crazy on the way down. It looked really good on the fall, just drew attention from all kinds of panfish in the area, which when you get the attention of the panfish, predators in the area are going to be like, hey, what's going on here? And they might come investigate as well. Well, the next thing I did is I went and rigged it up on the drop shot and put this out here in front of the camera. And what I found was even when I was trying to not impart any action, I was trying to hold my arm and wrist as still as possible. You can just see this little plastic with these strands of skirt material come to life. It just vibrated in the water column, bounced around. I mean, it's nearly impossible for us on the boat or the shoreline to stand there completely motionless, right? Well, this small lure is so affected by the tiniest movements that that was all the action that this needed. Now, if there is a downside to this, it would be probably the same downside as with wacky rigging and drop shotting. A lot of times you're going to work through all sizes of fish before we get to maybe one that we are looking for. This thing just gets bit. If you're having trouble casting the wacky rig version, you can just take a nail weight and push it right through the middle of this and that helps out. So you can give that a try. Now I haven't fished this a lot here, but with the tougher days of summer here, I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of finesse fishing. So I'm really interested to give it a serious go. And hey, if you would like to watch a video that talks about 
five common mistakes we make as jig anglers, especially new anglers, and how you can speed up that learning process, go ahead and check out this one right here. And make sure that you go ahead and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.